Okay, looking at analytical te techniques now, uh, very common in the exam. Uh, so we're going to look at electrophoresis and chromatography, and then uh, we're going to look at infrared and mass spectrometry. Okay, uh, with uh, just one slide on x-ray crystallography, I couldn't find any questions on that one. Um, and so we'll go to protein analysis first. So we can analyze proteins by breaking up amino acids. We can do that by using enzymes, heat or acid. And so once we break up the amino acids, we can then use chromatography. And so this should hopefully be revision that the retardation factor here is calculated by the distance moved by the amino acid divided by the distance moved of the solvent. So this is a question here. It could be any sort of question. And so you need to measure this out and I'll just uh, cheat a little. I don't have a ruler here. I know this is 5.6 centimeters in order if we get the ruler out. Um, and so we know that the band substance is 0 0.25 over here. Uh, and just wondering where that would occur on this uh, patient specimen, whether it would be this dot or this dot. Uh, so the RF, as you saw from the previous slide, is the, uh, the solvent, uh, sorry, the solute divided by the distance moved by the solvent. So we know the stuff, substance we want is 2.5. Um, we just don't know where this one's meant to be. Uh, and this one here is 5.6 centimeters. Okay, uh, sorry, 0 0.25. So if we uh, times that out, uh, we should get the solution. Uh, the, sol the solute should have moved up 0.25 times 5.6. So I'll just grab the calculator and that works out to 1.4 centimeters. So again, I don't have a ruler on me right now. So 5.6, that's about uh, 2.8 halfway. Uh, and halfway again is about uh, 1.4. Uh, so I would say that it's there, just to, sorry to have the hazard guess, uh, and therefore the patient does not have the banned substance, that that chemical is not the substance that is banned. Uh, and just a side mention, with the Oxford text, at least they've also mentioned uh, this chromato other chromatography technique. Uh, so this could be high pressure liquid chromatography or grass gas chromatography. Basically, you put a liquid or a gas through a column and there's a large surface area here and you can put various chemicals here. And so you, you can differentiate between different chemicals in gases or liquids through this column. Uh, with this particular one here, it's just by size, so that the larger molecules move slower and the faster ones come out quicker. So you could just do uh, grab some known standards of known sizes as they get larger, say maybe um, like 100,000 bases or 10,000 bases here, uh, and then get your unknown and work out what the molecular weight of your protein strand is. Uh, and so that's more of a data test thing. They should give you enough information if they give you a question like this to be able to work it out. So moving on to electrophoresis now. So electrophoresis based on their isoelectric point. And so if the pH is seven, you'll see from the isoelectric point that uh, substances that have a higher isoelectric point, say if they have an isoelectric point of eight, uh, that means there is uh, too many uh, H pluses for their liking. Uh, and so that would join on and make that one positive. If their iris electric point was six, um, that means there's too many OHs for their liking. The H pluses would come off and they would have an overall negative charge. Uh, if they have a negative charge, they'll be attracted to this uh, positive. Um, they'll go this way, uh, the positive electrode. And if they're positive, uh, they'll go this way and be attracted to this uh, negative electrode. And so that's how you can separate them out. Uh, they can then be stained uh, using inhydrin or UV because uh, that will show up the amino acids that came from the protein. Uh, and so a practice question here, there's a mixture of serine, glutamic acid and lysine uh, and the buffer, the pH is 5.6, uh, 5.7. So uh, what's the spot at C? How do you explain it? Uh, and the amino acid B is at the isoelectric point. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, that means it has no overall charge uh, and so it doesn't move. Uh, so it doesn't move. All right, so I have to go to data booklet now and look up serine glutamic acid and lysine. So I'll just pull that up. So I'll just pull up one here. Um, so there's uh, glut glutamic acid uh, over here is 3.2. So you, I'll just pull that back over here. Glutamic acid, isoelectric point 3.2. You'll have to trust me for the rest because I'm looking over at the 
other screen. So Cirone is 5.7, so we know that one is there, so that helps us cancel out. Uh, lysine, lysine is a 9.7. So if the isoelectric point is 9.7 and that's pH 5.7, that means there's too many H pluses uh, for its liking. The H pluses will join up to the enzyme and make it positive uh, and it'll go towards the negative end. Uh, and so you would expect that this would be lysine. Uh, and the same uh, similar sort of idea here. So this is the leftover one. Uh, and so if the uh, pH is 5.7, that means there's a lot more OH minuses than it would expect. Um, and therefore that would take the H pluses away uh, and that would leave it as a negative molecule. The negative molecule will move from this spot and be attracted to the positive end. Uh, so which is it? So GLU we can say that uh, because uh, the, the isoelectric point, point is 3.2, but pH is 5.7, therefore excess OH minuses will take H pluses away, uh, leaving uh, glutamic acid negative uh, of the negative charge uh, moving towards positive electrode. And I've seen students write more messy than that. That's um, just barely passable. Okay, so let's just see what the answers are. Yes, it is uh, glutamic acid. So 1.4 saying the isoelectric point, we got that, uh, loses H, we didn't say it acts as an acid, uh, becomes negatively charged, they really should have a fourth point and say it moves towards the positive electrode. Uh, that's kind of important as well. Uh, this one we got a bit lazy, there's quite a lot we could say. It says vitorion, uh, no overall charge. So we got the marks for that mark scheme. So the next thing we can do now, the syllabus really only gives you um, X-ray, uh, sorry, infrared spectroscopy and mass spectroscopy. There's a whole range of different tests that you do to work out whether a compound, what a compound is. Uh, probably these two alone are not enough. Um, it would be nice to do a whole heap of other things that are listed in this paragraph. Uh, a bit of lip service is given to X-ray crystallography at the end. So moving on to mass spectroscopy first. Uh, so what happens is we grab the chemical and we hit it with an electron beam. Uh, and that takes an electron off and creates the molecule with a positive charge. Uh, it also breaks up the molecule and gives it uh, the, the broken up molecule positive charge also. So the smaller fragments move down here and the heavier fragments move up here. Uh, and so what you're going to see here is a pattern like this. Uh, and so the molecule itself is here. Uh, and then uh, this particular is benzo benzene chloride. So the molecule looks like this uh, but it has a positive charge here um, and then you'll have fragments uh, so it'll break up as well so this is probably the benzene part um, and that has just broken off um, with a positive charge all right now you're also going to get uh, slight artifacts here so because a small percentage of carbon is carbon 13 there'll be this little bit here uh, and quite a large proportion of chlorine uh, a third of it is uh, 37 isotope 37 so you'll get a peak that's about a third the size of this one uh, exactly two points up from there so that artifact is caused from isotopes so here's an example of ethanol it doesn't have the artifacts in there it's just um, got the um, peaks here and not the, the bits in between that um, are created. Uh, this is also a data booklet where you don't have to count them up. So for your ATAR, you're going to have to do this yourself. You're going to have to work out the fragments are and add them up. Uh, and so you can see here that these are just fragments here. They're still molecules, but the one electron's been knocked off and so it's got a positive charge and so it's been pushed down the mass spectrometer and it forms um, this this uh, curve here, this uh, graph. So let's go to a practice question then. Um, so what you have is a molecular formula is three C three H six O two, and so C three. Uh, if we just, we, what I basically do is is draw a possibility uh, and see how many different possible molecules I could get. Then I break them up into pieces, add them up, see which peaks they could possibly be. Uh, so three carbons, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Uh, two oxygens, uh, so put a double bond in there, uh, and so the oxygen could be this one here, so I'll push the hydrogen over there, so it could be that, so this could be anywhere along here as well, um, 
and it could also be other things so let's just see if uh, double alcohol would work so six there's the two oxygens and how many hydrogens one two three four five six seven eight so it couldn't be that um, so let's just go with this first and see if we get lucky and if it's not we'll try drawing other compounds and see if they work so it's going to split here and here uh, if you split this particle off here that's 12 uh, plus 5 uh, so that's sorry, 24 12 plus 12 is 24 24 plus 5 is 29 uh, what do we have here uh, we have something here at 29 so that's a possibility um, just this bit here uh, that uh, that will be 12 plus 3 uh, so that's 15 uh, we've got a 15 here not looking too confident at the moment um, let's look at the overall molecule of course um, and so that should end up as 74 so three carbons are 36 plus two oxygens is 32 uh, plus six hydrogens is six and so that gives us a 4 there, plus a 174. So that makes sense, uh, although we don't exactly know. So the graph does make sense, but we still don't know what that is. Although that is the question. Uh, what's this one here? So we can write that in. C3H6O2+. Uh, that 45. So it, let's see what this bit adds up to. Uh, and so that's 12 plus 32 plus 1. And that adds up to 45. So that, that's looking pretty good for the answer. So C, uh, we think that's a carboxylic acid group. So that looks to be uh, C2H5+. Plus. Uh, so let's see how we went. Um, so we got this one here right. Just check uh, that and C25. Yes, so we got those three right. As you can see, we're getting clues, but it, we're not that confident yet. Uh, we don't have enough information really um, to be sure of that. We didn't ch double check it with other possible compounds either. So um, if you get time, go back and check these answers with other possible answers. Okay, now moving on to infrared spectroscopy. Now infrared spectroscopy is where the infrared uh, radiation that you send into a molecule will react. Uh, it won't react with symmetric stretches, uh, but it will react with uh, bends in the molecule that are asymmetric um, or a, symmet a, a symmetric bend. Uh, that's just background information of how the infrared molecule works. It also has a, a little bit of effect with lighter atoms and uh, a stronger bond enthalpies also change the amount of frequency. Okay, so in your data booklet, you'll have um, a whole range of um, numbers. Uh, then you'll see, you'll be able to match up those numbers with the different types of bonds. Uh, and so with ethanol, uh, the OH bond uh, will be here as the fingerprint. CH is around here, around 3000, um, so it's not too helpful, and COs um, over here. So let's just look at uh, our actual example then. Um, so this one here, it's uh, I've taken this one uh, off the internet. It's hard to find questions uh, for ATAR. ATAR, they seem to ask questions in quite peculiar ways sometimes, um, but if you get the general concepts, you should be able to work things out, hopefully. Um, so this one here, we have alcohol groups here. So the alcohol groups um, here, these are alcohol groups linked to carboxylic acids, which is not it. Um, these are alcohol, just plain alcohol groups, and there's nothing with 32,000 upwards with just the plain alcohol groups. So we can cross out um, A and E because uh, that one doesn't exist. Um, we can then uh, look at this formula here um, and see if that compound actually um, can form with this. Um, we can see there's two oxygens here, um, so that cancels that one out. All right, um, what else are we looking at here? We have uh, a reading at 1,700. Um, so if we look for 1,700, that's quite indicative of a C double bond O. Uh, and that one had one, and this one does have one, and that one doesn't have one. So that one really crosses that one out, and we're less with D. Uh, and so these are, the, these are the key peaks here. This is um, just not that helpful because it basically is the carbon chain. 
uh, and so that's not really indicative. So we've been able to cancel that one out to D. Uh, and lastly, X-ray crystallography. Basically, I think we've mentioned this in a previous video, you get the atoms in a crystal, so they're all in set even spaces. Uh, this time you hit it with uh, X-rays, and the X-rays will bounce off uh, in a various pattern, and we use mathematical formulas to calculate uh, what the bond angles and lengths are. Um, and as I said, that the mathematics of that is um, a little bit beyond chemistry uh, mathematics for the moment. Just appreciate that does form a pattern based upon the lengths. Uh, and you can look up the Bragg equation if you're curious, B-R-A-G-G, -G, um, if you want to follow that up further.